Welcome back. Moving on from caching your routes, we're going to be going over parameters. So one thing that you can do in Laravel is you can pass parameters to your routes, just like you see over here. In this case, this post ID has a parameter and the parameter is the ID. What you can do inside of your controller or right here in the closure is you can find these IDs. You, so I can, if I had a post model, I don't have one yet, but when we're actually going to be building a block once I finish this series, you can do something like find ID and you can even make this shorter, but I'll get into that in, in a little bit. So basically this right here, you can pass it right here and then you have access to this already inside of your controller inside of uh preferably your controller like i mentioned before but you can have it in your closure and then return this to the user or do whatever you're trying to do with it in this case you'll probably return a view that that is showing this specific post but you get the idea you can pass these parameters and these parameters can also be optional you just need to add a question mark at the end and what it's going to do, it's going to make these parameters an optional parameter. And you don't have to, to uh, use it in this case. But in here, you do have to use it or else it's not going to understand what this route is about. Along with the parameters, you can also, in Laravel, do regular expressions. So say in case you have a post and you have this post classified by the slug of the post, which can be the title, uh, slug, slide, slug title, you can do something like this, where basically you're passing the ID and the slug, and then you can regular, you can use regular expressions right here for your parameters. So it knows that an ID has to be a number between zero and nine, and a slug has to be letters A through Z. Basically, what you can do with this is you can create your blog and then you can have different blog posts going over it and you can find it either by the po the ID of the post and then you can use this log of the post. So basically, your users can access it like something like posts uh, and then the ID of the post and then this log or if you want to make it more more friendly to to search engines you can do something like just the slug make sure that the slug in this case it's unique that way it's not going to get confused as to how you're using it i personally use another method so i inject them into my service provider and i will get into that once we get into the service providers and once we start building the blog but basically post slug is what this route is going to be understanding so that you can just use the slug of the post. And again, make sure that it's unique and it's gonna give you more of a friendly URL. So it's gonna be more, much more friendly URL for search engines. And one more thing, you don't have to use ID over here. You can actually use post ID However, it is much better convention in Laravel to just use ID. And this will get more into a little bit, but basically it'll give you uh, more ease of use if you have it like this, but you can feel free and do it like this if you want to. But basically, if you wanna be doing model binding, you probably will be doing something like this. And I will get into that in a little bit once again. But yeah, try to keep it with the ID so that it's, it's, it's more along the lines of the conventions of Laravel. One more thing that we see in these routes that I already built is the naming. So you can name the routes and basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to use it inside of your blade templates or your PHP templates for you to refer to them as well as in your controllers if you're trying to maybe redirect to a specific route or click on a specific route on your view. So basically the name is right here. This one's post show. And we can use it something like this. So if you look at the route already built, you can do a href and you can do this route post show, which is the same name that you see right here. And then this is passing an ID of one and then it's saying, hey, go to post one. So the result of this is gonna give me a, well, this is a blank canvas, but just go to post one right here. It's a, it's an 
it's an anchor tag with the go to post one. A good convention for you to name your routes is you can name your routes anything you'd like, but the common convention is to use the plural of the resource name, then a period, and then the action. So in this case, the resource is post, and then a period, and then the action, with the, which is show. And then this ID right here is the parameter that you're trying to pass. You, there are four different ways that you can that you can send parameters and you can pass parameters into the application. So you can do something like route post comments if you're trying to pass a comment and then show one and two. So this is post one comment two. This is uh, an array and it's passing basically the ID of the first and then the ID of the second resource. And this will give you something like this playground without the bar, without the option at the end, just playground.com post one comments two. option two is if you, you can actually specify the post ID and this is usually what I use so that it's better, more understandable. So you know that you're passing post ID one and comment ID two. And again, this full bar, it's only going to be applicable right here at the end. I just, misspelled or, or copied that wrong basically where you own you're only going to see that right here so you can pass as many parameters as you want that's option four and basically full bar is what you see over here and that's how that's how you can actually show up something so if it's not mapped in your in your route file it's basically going to default to just a query parameter or a URL parameter. And option three again is you can do any order. So you can do post ID, comment ID, or comment ID and post ID. It doesn't really matter as long as you're passing this. And that's why I like this because it doesn't really matter if you're doing the order and how you're doing the order. It's still gonna give you this result. It's gonna give you these results for all these three. And then for the last one, because this is not mapping our router, so it's gonna do full bar as a query parameter. One more thing that you can do with Laravel is that it gives you the ability for you to group your routes. And this is good for when, ex for example, you're trying to maybe pass a middleware. And this is the most common use for this. You're trying to say, hey, all of these routes right here, foo and bar, are going to be, you are going to have to be logged in for you to be able to see them. If you're not logged in, you can't see them. So that's a good common use for it. Usually you have, in your application routes that are grouped under this and then whatever else you have over here which is the public view what whatever some everybody else is going to look at this is what the authenticated users are going to look look at and this allows you this group allows you to just group them you can use middleware right here in your web.php or you can use them inside of the welcome controller so if i do it inside of the constructor I can come right here and then do something like this middleware and then pass whatever middleware that I'm trying to pass into that controller. Uh, it is a good idea to do it inside of your controller uh, just because it gives you more clarity and uh, mainly just clarity. But basically, if you're trying to group a lot of routes under the same middleware, just do it outside over here. One more neat thing that you can do in Laravel is inside of your of your middleware method right here, you can pass obviously the middleware you're trying to do. And this is will, will be a case if you're doing like multiple middlewares, you pass an array. You can also just do a single string. And then as a second parameter, you can do rate limiting. So you can use the throttle middleware and the first parameter is the number of tries a user is permitted. And the second parameter is the number of minutes that it, it's going to take for this to reset. So basically, if you have a, a bot or something that is trying to access your, your route, you can control that through, with the throttle middleware. All you have to do is pass it along like this, or you can do it inside of an array. Both ways work. This can also be dynamic. So in case maybe you already have some kind of, of of that of a field in your database on your users table maybe that you can target you can do something like plan rate limit 
so that you can limit this for the user that is trying to access that maybe if you have some kind of paid plan or something like that you can definitely do that one more neat thing that you can do with grouping the routes like this is you can add prefixes so say for example i wanted this to be inside of a dashboard i can do something like prefix let me add the middleware over there and then i can do dashboard that way anything that it's inside of this will actually be dashboard dot dash foo and dashboard dash bar but you don't need to add them because you're already adding the prefix right up over here on top so that's very neat because you can have multiple routes going into just one single prefix right over here there is one more route method that i don't see in here but basically you can do a fallback so basically what a foul fallback would allow you to do is any anytime somebody accesses a route so maybe you can use it as a 404 or something like that you can have a specific method that you're returning in your controller so basically or right here as a closure you can do something like like this and then you can return a view that maybe has your 404 somewhere so that you can do that throughout the application only once the one thing about the fallback method is you need to use it at the end of your routes so don't use it in the beginning in the middle anywhere else use it at the end of your route. one more thing that you can do with the routes is say that you have a multi-tenant application that you're trying to build or maybe you have a subdomain laravel actually gives you a domain method that you can use for that so i can say something like hey this is api this is for the api and i'm going to be using the same thing that i'm using so playground that test or that com actually and this is the subdomain that I'm trying to use and you can actually group this and then everything that's inside of this group over here I know that it's going to be part of this subdomain over here so you can be very specific and I mentioned multi-tenancy and the main reason why I have done that this over here and why I mentioned it is because you can really do a, a cool multi-tenant app because you can change this by just adding the account so or, or the name of the company or whatever you however you want to identify it so basically you can have multiple companies have their own subdomains inside of your application and you can differentiate their routes like this whenever you are doing this it may be uh, also a good idea to add a namespace to your route so you can actually do that in Laravel um, say for example i have this company but i don't want to share all the controller because it can get very confusing as far as the logic just getting stuff from this company or whatever you're trying to do but basically you can do over here namespace and then pass the namespace that you're trying to do so you can say something like company a that's the namespace and then what this is going to do is it's going to take tell Laravel hey look for it inside of the app HTTP folder and inside of my controllers which is the same controllers that you see over here but over here I want you to look inside of company A so it'll be it'll work if you had another extra directory where it was called company A so it, it'll know what that is and it'll know that all these routes you're trying to access inside of this are inside of this company A directory.